In GTA Online, the solo player has a unique edge independence with the right assets like the Kasatka Agency, Scrapyard, Acid Lab, and a few others. You can navigate Los Santos on your terms, turning solitude into profit. Today, we're breaking down how to maximize your earnings solo. No alliance, no team, no crew, just pure strategy and gate. My name's Dan, and I'm an old grumpy gamer. We'll be going through a quick summary of my favorite solo businesses in the game as of early 2024. Looking at what each business is, how to buy in, what's involved in running the business, and some solo tips. We'll keep this guide relatively high level, but if you'd like to do a deep dive into the economics of each business, you can check out this guide for a full detailed breakdown of earnings and return on investment for every single business in the game. Or check out the individual business guides, which you can find in the description and the pinned comment below. Again though, these are my personal favorite businesses for getting my grind on solo. Now there is a bit to go through here, and there are shortcuts to the relevant sections in the description. You can also view the chapters by dragging up from the bottom of the video, uh, and we'll be covering some thank yous and acknowledgements, defining a business for the purpose of this video, uh, the individual businesses themselves, and a quick wrap up. First up though, this video is largely a meta study built on the back of research completed by dozens of other people over the last few years. So let's start by acknowledging the Redditor Keith Amark, the GTA Max Profit website, Sports Skeeter, fellow Aussie and GTA aficionado TGG, GTA Boom, GTA Series Videos, the GTA Database, and the GTA Fandom Wiki. Links to all of these resources are in the description below, and I highly recommend checking them out. Next up, what constitutes a business for the purpose of this video? The way I see it, a business in GTA is any purchasable thing that allows us to generate income. That could be passive income like the nightclub, business features like the agency contracts, mission unlocks like the casino penthouse, or heist unlocks like the facility. We've excluded the freight shop because you don't have to purchase it, although we do go through the acid lab. We're also excluding things like Operation Paper Trail and Gerald's Last Play because there's no buying. So in no particular order, let's start with the Kasatka. So the Kasatka submarine isn't just a vessel. It's your solo ticket to the Cayo Perico heist, arguably the most rewarding endeavor in GTA Online for the Lone Wolf. Let's dive straight into how you can turn this submarine into a money-making machine. On the acquisition front, your journey will begin with a visit to the music locker, then Warstock, Cache, and Carry. Now, while the base model of the Kasatka does the job, consider the Sparrow helicopter for its agility and speed, and it's crucial for efficient heist prep missions. For the heist prep, efficiency is the key. Mandatory intel gathering on Cayo Perico sets the stage, but it's the selective approach to other prep missions that streamlines your path to the heist. I tend to opt for a stealth approach using the saboteur loadout, but it really is each to their own. For the heist itself, Stealth isn't just the strategy, it is your best friend. Selecting the right infiltration point is crucial for a smooth op, and collecting the best secondary loot you can while you're there. Artwork, powders, green stuff, and cash are often there for the taking, provided you can move quietly and quickly. Familiarity breeds success too. Understanding the lay of the land, or in this case, the island, alongside the routines of its patrolling guards can drastically improve your highest efficiency. And remember, nighttime is the right time for these operations, offering you the cover of darkness. Done right, the Cayo Perico heist isn't just profitable, it's a goldmine. We're talking upwards of a million per run with the right approach and execution and a good draw. For the solo player, this heist is not just an opportunity, it is an absolute game changer. Now looking at the charts for the moment, we can see the minimum investment is 2,200,000, which will allow us to generate roughly 300,000 per hour once you account for cooldowns. If we step up to the recommended setup rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of four and a half mil. And if we overlay the two, we can see the increased spend results in about the same income 
income. So it's not worth it from a return on investment point of view, although it does make the prep missions a lot quicker. Next up is the agency. Now the agency in GTA Online isn't just a building, it's a beacon for the solo entrepreneur ready to carve their niche in the bustling streets of Los Santos. Now, here's how you can turn this establishment into a cornerstone of your solo empire. To get started, head over to the Dynasty 8 Executive and pick your spot. Now, while location's more about convenience than functionality, consider accessibility and how it fits into your broader game plan. There are a few ways to earn with the agency. You can dive into security contracts for a steady stream of income. These missions are designed with the solo player in mind. They're straightforward yet rewarding. There there are payphone hits, quick, lucrative tasks with minimal time investment, making them ideal for the efficient solo player. We also have the contract featuring Dr. Dre. This one takes around five hours or so for the first run through, but pays a whopping 1.7 mil. After that, it takes around 90 minutes a run or so, and at a mil a pop. The trick here is balance. Alternate between the security contracts, payphone hits, and the contract to maintain a steady influx of cash. If you can spring for some upgrades like the gun locker and rec officer, you'll be significantly better off time-wise too. Looking at the charts for a moment, we can see the minimum investment is $2,010,000, which will allow us to generate roughly $771,000 per hour. We also have the first run through, so that's 1.7 mil, which takes about five hours. And if we step up to the recommended setup rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of 5.6 mil. But again, if we overlay the two, the increased spend doesn't really result in any extra income. So it's handy, but not absolutely worth it or necessary to start with. And on to the most recent addition to the solo business stable, the scrapyard. This one introduces innovative mechanics for solo players, blending strategy with action in the gritty underbelly of Los Santos. To get started, head to Maze Bank Foreclosures and secure a salvage yard. Then head over and wade through the cutscenes and opening setup missions. Now there is a couple of ways to earn. The Chop Shop offers limited but highly rewarding missions every week. These are your high stakes, low time investment opportunities tailor made to the solo entrepreneur eager to maximize their earnings without the need for backup. And the towing business and consistency is the key here. It's a steady hand in the volatile world of Los Santos, providing a reliable income stream. Efficiency in operations is your best friend here, ensuring that every tow contributes significantly to your bottom line. Your weekly schedule should revolve around the chop shop missions. Use the downtime to focus on the towing business, creating a rhythm that ensures your cash flow never ebbs. This balanced approach keeps your operation lean and profitable. Looking at the charts for a moment, we can see the minimum investment is 2270000 which will generate roughly 112.5 per hour. We also have the weekly bonus of around 900 grand, which takes around two hours to collect and if we step up to the recommended setup rather than the minimum we're looking at an outlay of a little over five and a half mil which will put the income to around 175 per hour and if we overlay the two we can see the increased spend results in about a 35 percent higher income so it's definitely worth spending the cash while we're on new additions the acid lab held within the robust confines of the mtl brigade 6x6 offers a unique blend of mobility and profitability, a perfect setup for the strategic solo player in GTA Online. Your first order of business is acquiring the MTL Brigade. You get this as a reward for completing the first round of DAX missions, the first dose series. You could buy it, but that's pointless, so don't do that. Once in your possession, upgrade it to incorporate the Acid Lab. This initial investment kickstarts your venture into the world of covert manufacturing, all from the back of the mobile unit. Keeping your lab operational is key. Regular supply runs ensure continuous production and for those who'd rather not get their hands dirty purchasing supplies is a viable, albeit more costly, alternative. It frees up time for other lucrative investments while your lab churns out the product. 
Selling your product is where the rubber meets the road. Solo players must plan their sale missions with precision, choosing the timings and routes that minimize the risk from NPCs, and more importantly, other players looking to disrupt their business. The real key here though, is to invest in your Acid Labs upgrades once they've been unlocked. Enhancements not only speed up production, but increase the value of your product, leading to higher earnings per hour. It's a straightforward equation. The more efficient your lab, the greater the profit margins. So looking at the charts for a moment, you can see the minimum investment is 750,000, which will allow you to generate roughly $7,600 per hour. We also have the one-time bonus from the DAX missions of 50 grand a throw or 500 in total, and they can only be run every in-game day. So that takes around 10 hours to collect. So if we step up to the recommended setup, once you've got all of the upgrades, we're at a total of $1 million. That's an extra 250,000 for the DAX upgrades after the DAX missions, which will pull an income of around 59.8 per hour. And if we overlay the two, we can see the increased spend results in something like 87% higher income. So it's absolutely worth the effort. Okay, over to Moody and Sasanta and some of the worst voice acting in the entire series. Come on, baby, come on. Ah, we on, baby. In more ways than one. <laughs> oh, brother, this guy stinks! The Auto Shop presents a blend of creativity and cunning, ideal for the solo entrepreneur where art meets ambition and rubber literally meets the road. To get rolling, head to the Los Santos Car Club, suffer through the cutscenes, and then head to the Maze Bank Foreclosure website to make your purchase. While the location of your shop can influence convenience for your operations, it won't affect the bottom line. For earning opportunities, we have the exotic exports, where the streets of Los Santos are ripe with high value vehicles waiting to be discovered and delivered. Parallel to this is the the auto shop contracts. They offer a series of mini heists that are not just doable solo, but are designed expressly with the solo player in mind. These contracts provide substantial rewards for those willing to take on the challenge. Beyond the thrill of the hunt and the heists, your auto shop serves as a hub for vehicle customization. It's here that upgrading customer vehicles turns into a reliable revenue stream, and efficiency is the key. Focus on quick turnarounds to keep the cash flowing. The secret to maximizing Optimizing your auto shop potential lies in balancing your efforts. Alternate between the adrenaline fuel world of exotic exports and the strategic depth of the auto shop contracts. And in quieter moments, you can turn your attention to the customization work, ensuring a consistent stream of income. Looking at the charts again, we can see the minimum investment is 1,670,000, which will allow us to generate roughly 770,000 per hour, largely off contracts, once you've got your eye in. If we step up to the recommended setup rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of 3,730,000, which will bring the income to around 820,000 per hour, again, once you've got your eye in on those contracts. So if we overlay the two, we can see the increased spend results in about the same kind of income, so it's not worth the spend initially, but it is worth upgrading later. And the final one on the list, and it's a bit of a surprise, the MC Clubhouse has evolved into a hub of opportunity akin to the auto shop, now featuring custom bike shops, contracts, and a revamped bar. You can acquire the MC Clubhouse through Maze Bank foreclosures. Similar to other properties, the location of your clubhouse affects convenience, but not the bottom line. For earning opportunities, we have the bar, a newly added feature. The bar within your clubhouse can become a source of passive income. Just keep it stocked and it'll keep your cash reserves buoyant. The bike shop contracts. So we can engage in these mini high series to rake in substantial rewards. Designed with the solo player in mind, these contracts blend the thrill of the chase with the satisfaction of a job well done and customization work. So the custom bike shop is where artistry and engineering meet. Customizing customer motorcycles not only fuels the creative side, but also ensures a steady stream of income. And efficiency is the key, so aim for quick completions to maximize return. The secret to your MC Clubhouse's success 
lies in striking the right balance. Alternate between the adrenaline pumping bike shop contracts and the meticulous work in the custom bike shop. In quieter times, tend to your bar, ensuring it remains a reliable source of passive income. Looking at the charts for a moment, we can see the minimum investment is $200,000, which will allow us to generate roughly 40 grand an hour. If we step up to the recommended setup rather than the minimum, we're looking at an outlay of about 979,000, which will pull an income of around 65,000 per hour. And if we overlay the two, we can see the increased spend results in about 38% more income, so it's worth the spend. Anyway, that's it for now. Check out the video up the top for our guide on every business in GTA or the playlist at the bottom for our individual business deep dives. You can also find guides linked in the description. Stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you in the next video.